from Native Instruments and Galaxy Instruments. And it runs here in Contact. It will run in the full version of Contact, the paid version of Contact, or the free Contact player. If you want to pick it up, you can always get it on its own right over here, or of course, get it as part of Complete 13. Now, the library size for Noir is about 14.6 gigs fully installed. Once you get it installed, you'll find it here in contact under libraries, right here it is, expand it, and you'll have a felt and pure instrument. The pure version is an unadulterated grand piano sampled from the Yamaha CFX grand piano. And the felt instrument is the same piano, but it has a felt moderator between the hammers and the strings. So it gives it a bit of a softer tone, less attack and perfect for things like neoclassical and post minimal compositions. The pure instrument can really be used for everything. It is a beautiful instrument, a great all arounder. It really works for anything. It's a great piano, lots of options here, especially once we dive in to things like our effects, the really cool particles engine, the space section here. So we'll go through all of that here in just a second. But first, we'll compare the pure versus the felt. So we've already heard the pure, but I'll mute our bass and our drums and just hear the pure and then switch over to the felt. So again, this is the pure. And then we'll check out the felt. Less attack, softer, much more intimate sound overall. Back to the pure real quick here. Both of these are just absolutely beautiful piano libraries. And again, you can really use these with anything at all. So we're gonna stick with the pure here as we go through all of the parameters, the options that you have are going to be the same for the pure and for the, uh, the felt. You see we have the color, the tonal shift, dynamics, effects section, et cetera, et cetera. So let's stick here with the pure and check out how this uh, works. So on the front page here, we have color, tonal shift, dynamic, reverb, and delay. We'll start here with the color. And if you have the information section on here in contact, right down here, you can see as I hover over any control, it tells me exactly what it does. Now, if you don't have that on, you can turn it on right up here. Just click that and make sure info is checked. So your color changes the tone from soft to hard. So we have full control of this piano. Or harder. Just dial all of that into taste, and then you have a tonal shift, which changes the playback speed of each sample. And essentially what this does is make the piano either brighter or darker overall. Kind of brighter over here, darker over there. Just set it to wherever you like, and then you have a dynamic range. So you want a larger dynamic range, now, dynamic range, understand, is just the difference between uh, really soft notes and then really loud notes. So, for example, you know, really soft note and then really loud note. If I have my dynamic range over here, I have a very large dynamic range. If it's over here, I have a much smaller dynamic range. So even if I play softly on the keys and then hard, there's not as much, you know, of a of a difference. Everything is more even overall. Let's grab a different sample there, hear that? 
less dynamic range, more dynamic range. It's pretty good for what we want right there. Then we have a reverb and a delay. Now these do correspond to the space section over here, all right? And we can turn these on with these little buttons right there. If they're not turned on, they're not going to work. Come back to space here, as you can see, the reverb is turned off. If I click here, it turns on. Or if I click here, it will turn on, as you can see right there. Same thing for our delay. Then we can adjust the amount that we want in our overall signal with our two different uh, knobs. And we'll come to the reverb section here in a minute, but you have some basic things like either a convolution reverb or an algorithmic reverb. And then you have a lot of different options for our replica delay. Come back here and dial in your reverb and your delay. All right, let's move on to our piano tab. We have a lot of different options. You could really, again, you could really customize this piano in a lot of different ways. So first up, we have the anatomy. We have release samples. Now, again, look down here in this information section if you wanna know exactly what these uh, things are. So essentially what release samples are is when releasing a key on a piano, the damper stops the vibrating string. So the noise of that dying string is captured with the uh, release samples. Again, turn those on or off. Turn them back on just the overall level of those samples. Then you have resonance, dial in the amount that you want. Of course, this corresponds to your, uh, to your pedal as well. I don't wanna get too much resonance here. You can really hear it resonating there. Then we have overtones. These are different samples. You can turn those on or off, turn them back on right there. So that's the overtone samples. So after hitting a key, the corresponding string may resonate at their fundamental or overtone frequencies. Essentially, this can make things a little bit more lively overall. And then you can dial in the amount that uh, that you want of uh, your overtones. Then you have your attack. Now, if you take your attack off of the default setting, then your piano is gonna act more kind of like a pad where it slides in, right? So if I take my attack up here, I hit a key. Instead of just coming on, it slides in. So this can get really cool once you start combining it with effects, your particle section, etc. So if I were to do something like the style there, put this on moving perhaps, and or continuous. So that does not sound like a piano at all. Again, you can do a lot of different things with this one instrument. Let's put our attack back there. Then we have noises, pretty simple to figure out. Pedal noises, click over here. You can adjust the rumble of that, the damper of that, the strings. Again, look down here if you want to read exactly what each of these uh, things are. Pull that way up. You hear that pedal. Mechanical noises. Again, we have note on, note off. Now low cut. Essentially, the low cut can cut out some rumble from that if you need to. You can hear that low end rumble. I can cut that out here. Then you also have felt noises as well, which you can dial in. All right, let's turn all of those off for now. Over on the tone section, you have overall tonal depth, and it has been on the entire time here. Let me turn it off and play. Already sounds good, but our tonal depth will uh, activate additional resonance, which does give us a uh, deeper sound character. Then, of course, dial that in. 
pull it way up here. Much deeper now. A little too much. That's pretty good. Then you have your low key control, and essentially this is going to control the level of the low keys. Do you want your piano to be more, you know, low end dominant or or not? So I pull this down here. Let's grab sample here. Turn our low keys way down. We'll turn off tonal depth too. And pull our low key up. So they're much more present. Use this to adjust if you really want that low end to pop out or if things are getting a little too uh, congested in the low area. You can, of course, adjust that here as well. Then we have a sub and you can choose the note below which this sub is triggered. You can just click and drag to change that. Control click will set that back to uh, the default. You can turn your sub on and then dial in the amount. Now the sub is pretty cool. Almost sounds like a bass playing along with your piano. Get pretty crazy if you uh, overdo it. Combine all this stuff together here. A great full and surrounding sound there. Then we have settings. So we have velocity. We can choose linear. That's going to be the default. Then if you have certain controllers, certain MIDI keyboards, like I do have a complete control um, 49 here, I believe, and we can set up our velocity to correspond with that specific keyboard or go between your know, softest and hardest. So what does this mean exactly? Well, it's on linear right now. The one thing you may or may not know, here in contact, whenever you play a key, click a key, way up here, it's a low velocity. When you click it down here, it's a high velocity. So right now it's on linear. If I click way down here, it's low. Up here, it's high. But if I go to something like softest, I can play a soft velocity. Then when I come up here, it's still a pretty soft velocity. Then up here, finally a harder velocity, right? That velocity curve is now different, meaning I have to press harder on my key to actually get a higher velocity. If it was on hardest, for example, let's turn this delay off. If it was on hardest, then I don't even have to hit that hard on my key to actually get a higher velocity. So that's what that means. See, I'm already getting a high velocity right here. So again, set this up uh, according to your keyboard, to your playing style, or to any MIDI that you have in your DAW, because it will affect any MIDI that is already in your DAW. We'll hear that here, we'll put it on softest. Right, much softer, put it on harder. Right. So I didn't change anything at all with this MIDI, but the velocity, you know, I didn't change the velocity or anything, but the velocities are interpreted different on the, uh, on the piano, okay? We'll put this back to linear. Then we have silent key, so very, very low velocities. Like very, very low won't be heard if you turn, uh, turn that on. So a very low velocity. We can still hear like overtones, as you can tell here. You can still hear the overtones and maybe some fabric or mechanical noises. Very soft. You're hearing those overtones. You're not hearing anything at all because the silent key is on. Turn it off. You're going to hear something. Okay, so this is more of just a preference of your playing style and how you want things to... Uh, to react. Then you have repedal and half pedal controls. I don't have a pedal here with me, but again, you can read that down there. You're repedaling. The sustain pedal is depressed during the note release. The remaining sound sustains, and then you can enable half pedaling. Now you have to have a special pedal for the half pedaling. You'll need a special continuous sustain pedal. If the half pedal button is unchecked, a continuous sustain pedal is transformed into an on off switch. All right. Just turn those on again to taste. Then we have the overall tuning. Pretty easy to figure out, right? What do you want this to be tuned at? 440 is of course the default, but you can change these around if you want. If I wanted it down on, uh, you know, 
436, for example, or on 444. Then you can choose between stretched or equal tuning. Essentially what this means is if a note is 440, you know, if it's A440, 440 hertz, then you can double that. 880 would be an equal tuning, whereas a stretched tuning will be slightly above the, uh, the 880. And that is to accommodate the nature of uh, metal strings, the way they vibrate, the inharmonicity of those strings, and it just makes sure everything sounds more, uh, more in tune as you're playing your chords or just, you know, different notes, octaves, etc. You're not going to hear much difference. In general, you'll want to leave it on stretched. So we will leave it on the default there on stretched. All right, let's move on to the effects section. So let's head over to the effects section. Just click the uh, effects button. Anytime we want to get back to just the picture of the piano, you can click, uh, re-click any, uh, any of these buttons. So over here in the effects section, you have an EQ, turn it on or off, and then choose your center frequency, you know, the frequency you're going to center around by using these drop downs. So instead of adjusting an EQ and selecting your center frequency, you just choose the uh, the type, okay? You want to center around the body area, the punch area, or the bite area, etc. Here, in the uh, in the mid range, or in the low end, or in the uh, top end here, and then the amount of boost or cut in that range. So we're focused around the presence. You can pull that out, dial it in, or give it some more shimmer. Same thing for our mid range. some body out there for the low end you can turn it to sub if you want pull it in pull it down etc etc then control click will set these to their uh, to their defaults then we have a transient control right here you can turn that on or off and then focus here on the attack or the sustain so over on the on the attack side or the sustain side. You can hear how much longer that sustains, right? Let's grab a different sample there. And just dial it into uh, to taste. Then you have a compressor, turn it on, choose the amount of compression. And then we can choose different uh, types down here, hard limiting, wide range, parallel compression, et cetera, et cetera. Again, whatever, whatever you prefer, whatever works for your track. Let me turn it off uh, for now. Then we have a stereo image. Turn that on or off. Use your slider here. Take it down to mono. Take it to the standard stereo image or beyond that really widens up right then use this button right here which is called the stereo swap so essentially what this does is if you are behind a piano and you're playing right your low notes are going to be to your left your high notes will be to your right so that's how you're going to hear them whenever you're playing you're going to hear the low on the left the high on the right what this does is it swaps that around so it's like you're on the other side of the piano or like an audience is listening to the uh, to the piano, right? Everything gets turned around. So the audience is gonna hear, let me go ahead and turn that on. The audience is gonna hear the low end on the uh, right and the high end on the left. Now, of course, it's not fully left or right, but that's how they're, uh, that's how they're panned and will be interpreted. Right, switches sides.
Turn it on. So now it's like you're in the audience, right? Again, this just comes down to preference on how you how you want things to be heard uh, in your uh, in your music. Then we have style, and this is where things can get pretty uh, pretty cool. So we can turn that on, and then we have different uh, types and categories right here. So on timber, we can have it sound like a tape. Go through these here. Toy speaker. 30s radio. But then we'll go to the moving category and a bunch of different types here. If we went to a mid tremolo. Rhodes tremolo. And then we'll go to the continuous category. Now this is where things start to get uh, start to get pretty weird or cool depending on uh, how you look at it. So on this horizon setting, I'll just press uh, one key. Again, that does not sound like a piano. Now we sound much more like a pad. And whenever you combine this with all of your other effects uh, and this particles engine, you can get a lot of really cool sounds uh, that don't sound like a piano at, uh, at all. All right, we'll turn style off for now. Move it back to timber, and then we have our ambience section. So we have more uh, more noises other than our pedal mechanical felt noises here. We also have ambient noise. We can choose different types of noise, different rooms, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Tube mic noise. Dial in the amount. Silent hall. Flutter smooth again. Whatever uh, whatever you like. We'll do some tape. Sounds kind of cool. Then we have pianist noises. So of course, whenever you're playing the piano, you're a living human being. So you're breathing, you're moving around, you're you know creaking on the bench there, you're touching the keys, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You can turn uh, those samples on, dial up the volume and intensity of that. Now you're not going to hear the pianist noises unless the key is being pressed. So I'll just press a key very lightly. You hear that in the background? person moving around right so again dial that in to uh to taste for more realism for effect whatever you want then we have these noises two buttons we have one here for the eq and one for the styles section so our noises in general are not routed into the style or into the uh the eq so for example if i took the body the the mid range here for this piano Turned it way up, turn my noise on here, and then just pull up that noise. It's not being affected by my EQ. But if I send my noise to the EQ, now that noise will be affected by the EQ. All right? So that's all, that's all uh, these, uh, these buttons do. Same thing for the style. If I want the noise to be affected by the style, Pop that on. Then the noise will change, which again can get pretty cool if you move this to continuous, and then it can self-generate here. Some really cool pad and drone sounds. Put it on horizon there. Again, I'm not pressing any keys, just generating a really cool background noise for us. Really ominous sound here. All right, so that is the effects section. We're gonna skip over the particles engine for now and move over to the space section. And we have a reverb and delay over here. Again, turn the reverb on or off right here. We can choose between a convolution reverb, 
convolution is like a real model of, uh, of different rooms or spaces. Use your type right here, different categories, vintage, et cetera, et cetera. And then the uh, different types of that right here. We'll go to a room and we can choose a cathedral, for example. Change the size of that. Then the pre-delay. Now what a pre-delay does is do you want that reverb to come on immediately or do you want uh, the initial attack of, uh, of the piano and then the reverb to bloom on after that? You can do that if you wish. You can turn up the reverb here. So now the reverb comes on after I've played the note. And it sort of blooms on versus coming on immediately here. Like a little bit of a pre-delay just to let that attack through. Again, change the type. Lots of different types in here. Grand Rezo. We even have reverse reverb in here as well. Turn this up. Hear that? Change the beats. Up to eight beats. All right. Or you have an algorithmic reverb and you can dial in all of these settings. Choose between a hall style or a room style reverb. Damping, modulation, or movement of that. The stereo effect of that, is it going to be narrow or wide? The damping, so damping in the room, absorption, etc., etc. Way too much on that. A lot of modulation moves it around. I prefer the convolution reverb for the most natural sound. Very good. And then you have a delay. Turn it on right here or turn it on right here and then dial in the amount with your delay knob. Now we can click here to lock this to our DAW and then adjust as such, or you can do it in milliseconds. Just turn that off. We have a modern delay, analog tape, vintage and diffusion. And you'll have a few different options depending on the uh, type that you uh, choose. Do a simple delay here. Okay. How much do you want that to feedback? Or a lot? Almost self oscillating at that point. The overall depth of that. And then a low cut and a high cut. So we can trim off the repeats there in the low end or in the top end. Focus that just around where you want. You have the overall rate. Gives it uh, some modulation and some uh, saturation for tube-like saturation at the delay right there. And again, you have different types. So you have an analog style delay. Again, a few different options down here. And then you have tape delays, vintage delays, and diffusion. And diffusion can get uh, kind of weird. Combine this with your particles engine, all of your other effects. Sounds pretty cool, but let's go back to a modern delay. You also have a stereo and a ping pong. So the stereo is going to offset the uh, delays on the left and right side. You can hear that, right? Left and right channel offset a little bit. A bit wider sounding. Turn it off. Coming on at the same time. And then you have a ping pong, which is exactly what it sounds like. Ping pongs left and right. All right, so that is your delay. Dive into this delay. 
and go through this diffusion type. There's a lot of stuff that you can do with, uh, with this piano and all of the built-in effects. So what the particle engine will do is generate uh, complementary notes whenever we play our, uh, our piano. So all you have to do is turn it on. I'll press one key and you'll see something being generated in here. So again, I'm just playing one key. You can confirm that by looking on the keyboard right there, right? All of this is being generated. You can see what's being generated on the left and the right, and of course the key. Now in here, we have full presets for this that you can uh, call up. Different kinds. Dark rumble. Delayish. So I'm just playing a chord. Different kind of sounds there. Pretty cool. I'm just playing a chord. The rest is being generated there for me. Go ahead and reset that. Now up here we can choose between just the piano sound and the cloud, the particles cloud. So this is just what's being generated over here. Move that back here. You can choose your mode. So close by, around an octave, extremely bright, extremely fat, just choose that. And this is going to determine exactly what is uh, generated. If I go to a high cloud, for example, generate some upper notes for us. Pretty cool stuff. Just bright, just dark, low cloud, for example, here, do a chord. Let's go to uh, two octaves. Then we have density. Again, you can lock this to the tempo of your DAW or uh, freely select in milliseconds. Lock that uh, right there. Press one key. Not very dense right now, right? Let's pull this up. Okay. Now it's getting crazy, right? You can also change the, uh, the variation of that. Pull this up higher if you want. Or we can take everything down here. And I'm only holding down one key. All the rest is being generated. So you could make, uh, you could play some very complex sequences just by holding down a key. Dial that in to, uh, to taste there. Then you have a pre-delay. So currently the pre-delay is on and just like the pre-delay on our reverb, the pre-delay lets the initial piano play before the uh, uh, particle cloud, the particle engine starts generating those notes. If you want it to start immediately, turn off the pre-delay, then it starts immediately as you hit a note. The decay, so control the length of the decaying cloud in milliseconds after a key is uh, is pressed. I'll pull it way down here. Even though I'm still holding down that key, it decays very, very quickly, right? And it's gone. Again, up here to infinite, press and hold, just keeps generating. Release the key and it will stop. Then over here, yes, we have even more controls. The amount of, of options and customization you have in this piano is really unmatched by about anything else. So you have a source and we have effects that we can use with our particle engine. So right now the, the tone, the tonal is set to piano and the noise is felt. Then you have a slider here to adjust the mix level of the uh, tonal and the attack noise sources. So I can change this to plucked brush or mallet, put it on mallet, for example. Back 
back to piano. Over here to felt on this side. Change this to mechanics, combined, etc. We'll do soft stick. Getting a bit of a different sound. Change this to maybe brush. Blend those together. That's really cool. But we'll put it back on piano and felt for now. Move on to the timber. Pretty simple to figure out here, right? Soft to hard. So just a hard timber of our cloud or a larger dynamic range or only soft. Completely up to you. Then you have an attack. And again, like the attack that we had over here, do you want uh, your particle cloud to sort of slide in? Plays, pull the attack up here. You can hear it slide in. Kind of like a pad almost. Like a pad or almost like strings, really. Okay, on to the effects part. Yes, even more controls and customizations for Noir. So you can turn on your filter, low cut, high cut, pretty simple to figure out, right? Cut the lows. So we're just having that high end come through. Cut that out. Then we have diffusion. Turn this on and then we have different types. So we have delays and reverbs. I can go to maybe an old tape delay on that. Getting a bit crazy there. Let's turn this down a little bit right there. All right, that's pretty cool. Holding down literally one key. The strength and the time of that. Lock it to your DAW or adjust it in uh, in milliseconds. Again, a lot of different types, or we can go to a uh, reverb there. Just holding down a chord, getting all of this generated using the two octaves mode right now, but I could go to close by. The Particles Engine is one of the coolest things that I have seen included in a piano instrument and really makes this, uh, you know, really makes this a go-to piano because of all of the options that we have in here. The felt version is going to be the same as far as our, our options go. So I can pull that up and you can immediately see everything is familiar there from the color, the tonal shift, dynamics, effects, you can see. All the stuff here should be uh, should be familiar. Let me grab this sample here for the felt.
So again, much more than just your standard piano. So that is Noir for Contact. You should be familiar with all of your different controls now. And you also have full presets or what uh, Native Instruments calls snapshots right up here. If you're not seeing them, make sure your camera icon is showing right there and you have full presets which affect everything in uh, different categories here, particle, sound design, etc. So I can choose compressed here, uh, for example. Change the entire preset. See, it changes all kinds of stuff with each uh, each different snapshot. So to finish out the video, we'll have some more sound samples, uh, changing effects, changing settings, turning on or off the particle engine, changing the pianos, etc., and get a bunch of different sounds, show off a bunch of different sounds from Noir.
that is Noir. Again, you can pick it up on its own or get it as a part of Complete. And in my opinion, just picking up Complete, Complete Ultimate, Complete Ultimate Collector's Edition is a much better deal than trying to buy a bunch of these things individually. But once again, that is Noir from Native Instruments and Galaxy Instruments for Contact.